The condenser is the central air conditioning system's heat exchanger. Just next to a compressor, it is one of the critical parts of the AC system. And at the same time, a very fragile one. This seemingly simple aluminum part has a massive impact on the durability and efficiency of the entire system. Why should you include this part in the primary system inspection? Does it need to be complicated? How to diagnose if the condenser is the cause of the AC system failure? When to replace it? No worries. We know all the answers and are happy to share our knowledge. To run the diagnostics and service of the AC system, we'll use the service station, as well as fundamental tools. Let me start with pressure gauges, the ordinary kind, manual, or the more modern ones, wireless. Two thermometers, one probe-based, another a pyrometer. They are also beneficial in AC system diagnostics. The UV light and the leak detector with a nitrogen-based test gas to find and eliminate any leaks. The diagnostics should always begin with pressure control. I will use these two snazzy wireless pressure gauges and hook them up to the service ports in the vehicle. Let's start with static pressure measurements. Keep in mind that the temperature outside tremendously impacts the pressure values. That's why, in our case, we'll run the measurements at room temperature of about 20 degrees Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. We couple the pressure gauges down on the ports. One of the common leak causes is worn or broken Schrader valves in these ports. That's why inspecting them for potential leaks and replacing them if needed is a good idea. So, now I need a mobile device with a suitable application installed, and I know the pressure values. I have run the gauges and now wait on the readings. It reads three bars of the refrigerant's static pressure in the system. And in this kind of loop, the proper static pressure should be around 5 bars. This indicates a severe deficit of the refrigerant. Although the last system recharge was registered half a year ago in the vehicle's service record. The conclusion is simple. We're dealing with a leak, most likely from the condenser. And that is why today we'll look at condenser diagnostics. After removing several parts, I gained easy access to the condenser. The condenser is typically installed just behind the front bumper. Look, gravel, sand, salt, small stones or insects have no problem getting on the condenser's surfaces. That's why one of the best diagnostic tools is our eyes. I thoroughly have to review the condenser's surface and see if there is any damage or anything abnormal. For example, oily stains attracting dust and dirt always indicate something is wrong. Let's start with the most common condenser damages. I have a couple of good examples with me. The first one is surface clogging. What happened here? Look at the surface. It is covered with insects and sticky deposits, including sand, oil and asphalt, which all cause a significant loss of thermal efficiency of the entire element. In short, the limited efficiency causes the system's poor performance and the inner pressure and temperature to increase. Both can quickly affect and thus destroy the compressors. Let me show you a destroyed compressor. Look here. Abrasion on the piston. A clear sign of seizure. Just look at the oil from the same overheated and seized system. It is black and there are metal shavings in it. Do you know what was the main culprit here? The overheated oil and its impaired lubricative characteristics led to the compressor seizure. In this case, apart from the compressor replacement, someone did not replace the condenser or thoroughly flush the entire system. This severe compressor failure could have been avoided. Another thing that may appear on the condenser surface is visible oil stains attracting dirt. They indicate leaks and a leaky condenser cannot be repaired and must be replaced immediately. 
Another widespread condenser failure is corrosion, and it typically starts after driving in colder seasons and regions with de-icing salt spread on roads. The corrosion is relentless on parts without a factory applied anti-corrosive protection coating. Look here at these passages. The corroded fins fall out nearly on their own, reducing the part's efficiency. Even if the system was tight and worked properly, only one row of missing fins can drop efficiency by 5 to 10 percent. Parts in such a condition must be replaced immediately, as keeping this condenser will expose the entire system to severe, expensive malfunctions. The next type of defect is mechanical damage. Remember, the condenser is fragile and made of thin aluminum, so deformation can quickly result from careless handling or even a minor parking lot bump. Moreover, a heedless installation can defect the threaded aluminum couplings. In any case, you should immediately replace a mechanically broken condenser. Any damage to the condenser has a direct impact on both the efficiency and durability of the system. A faulty condenser will shorten the AC compressors and the AC fans' lifespan, cause an extra thermal load on the engine, increase fuel consumption, and by leaks, you will lose the pretty expensive refrigerant. In this case, it is a relatively simple matter, a slight leak in the condenser. Unfortunately, it needs to be replaced, so I'll connect the service station, empty the system and replace the part. The machine is running and the refrigerant is being recovered. In the meantime, let me show you a couple of cross-sections of three popular condenser designs. This one is something you should be familiar with. Pay attention to the size of the channels. But here's something new, micro-technology. The channels are very tiny. To show it better, here I have a separate tube. The refrigerant flows through those channels. But oil also needs to be there. Even a seemingly innocent deviation, such as an improper oil viscosity, can lead to clogging of the micro-channels. Other often occurring flow restrictions in the loop have their root cause in an improper use of additives or harmful particle formation. For example, splinters after compressor seizure or oil carbonizing. Any inner clogs provoke a rapid rise in the refrigerant pressure and thus the temperature. This is a perfect way to expose the AC compressor to overload and overheating. Remember, new technologies are great but susceptible to improper conditions. That's why you should regularly check the entire AC system controlling its pressure, temperatures, and inner cleanness. Here we go. This is a quick dismounting. Pay attention to the bottom part of the condenser. It is dirty and there are oil traces. Besides, there is a receiver dryer filter integrated with the condenser. Depending on the type of AC system, the filter's lifespan varies from two to five years, but you must replace it any time after opening the loop, thus enabling the ambient air and moisture to get inside. The filter dryer is an essential system protection part, and its failures can affect the entire system's vitality. After the condenser removal, I have easy access to the radiator, inspect its surfaces closely, and make sure there are no signs of mechanical damage or leaks. Using the possibility, you can clean the part's surface, removing leaves, dust, and other impurities hindering its airflow. By the way, watch our separate video on what to pay attention to when choosing a replacement radiator. After installing a new condenser in the vehicle, I pressure tested the system with nitrogen. After 12 hours, the pressure meters showed no loss of pressure, which means that the system is tight and I can proceed with the next step. Vacuum pulling. So why do we need the vacuum? It plays various roles and is essential to remove possible moisture residues from the system. Under the vacuum inside the loop, the moisture turns into a gas and can easily be eliminated. The majority of the service stations can do the job. Otherwise, you will need a separate vacuum pump for the procedure. We will pull the vacuum in this car for 40 minutes and then charge the system with a new refrigerant. That's not all. After any repairs, during regular checkups and especially when troubleshooting the system, thermal diagnostics of the loop is a highly recommended procedure. You will only need a good thermometer to do it. And what will we diagnose? I have a handy schematic for you. 
it shows all the AC loop component operational temperatures, including the proper and abnormal temperature readings. Furthermore, you can learn from it about the potential root causes of the deviations, so you can fix them. The schematic is available for download on the Nissan's Experts portal. Another chart shows how to diagnose the AC system using the refrigerant working pressures. You can find many improper pressure scenarios and potential solutions here. To get your free digital copy of the poster, visit our portal, nissens.com forward slash experts. We're happy to share our expert knowledge with you. And do you have some valuable repair insights? Could you share it with us? We promise to reward the best tips authors with professional testo equipment, like the one I use in my garage. Be part of the Nissan's Experts platform. We will make you an expert.